Well, it came about really uh, when I lost, nearly lost the paintings for a second time. We had the bushfires circling around in 1994. I had nearly lost the little paintings and few bits we'd brought out from Holland once before in a house fire. And um, this time with the bushfires coming, I began to panic. After the bushfires had gone, it was then that I realised that nobody knew anything about the paintings and the clock. And I was getting older and I wanted my kids to know something about that bit of their heritage. So I was the only one who could do it and more or less forced, me, more forced my hand into documenting some of that stuff. And it became a passion and it became a journey for, I suppose, a decade. I live near De Berg's Bridge, Lane Cove National Park, and the whole 85% of the National Park went up in, in flames right. that year, January 94. The setting is really at my house, so it's partly memoir and partly um, an art mystery because I'm looking into the history of this painting, the little one we called Miss Maris. This one I found very little about, but um, there are three other paintings in question. I think one of the artists could well be Piet Mondrian, but we, uh, I'm not going to tell you how that pans out just yet because uh, it may be dealt with at a later date. It's a journey that I didn't quite realise uh, its actual kernel. I thought I was doing one thing, but as often happens when you're writing, it turned into something totally different. And what is your connection with the Netherlands? I was born there and I have um, two half-siblings, um, boy, well, men, and one sister. So those people have, were not part of my life when I was growing up here in Australia, all by myself with my mum and dad. Um, we connected much later. The older half-brother when I was 21 and the others when I was in my 40s. So it's only been in the recent decades that we've been a connected whole family. So it was for me uh, partly a journey of rediscovery. I went back when I was a 21 year old to reconnect with a lovely fairy godmother who lived in, in uh, Switzerland. And I, the, in, in the bar, back part of my brain somewhere in the limbic part or whatever it's called, there was still language, but I hadn't used it for 15 years. So I speak Dutch. Um, and my difficulty was really with the reading because I'd left as a six-year-old and we still in those days did Aap Nog Mies Wim Yet, Lees Plankje and I'd only done the top line of it, Lees Plankje. So words that were using those sounds were fine but once we got into the other two rows I was a little lost. I was a teacher for many years and teacher librarian actually for the last 20 years of my career and as such um, I have a love affair with books and words but when I began my story it started off as a children's book and it was going to be our family history through the eyes of this painting Miss Maris but it grew and it allowed me to say my, my bit as well so we share the telling. How do you connect with her now? Uh, painting? Yes. She looks over me every day. Uh, she is by my back door and I have, since the publication of the book, I've bought her a special light, which I turn on most days, which just highlights her, so we've become a team. How do you feel about the artist himself? He was a complex character, a very affable, friendly fellow who brought together the well-to-do people of Amsterdam at the time and the artists who could immortalise them. Um, this happened down the road on the Kaisersgracht uh, from where my grandparents lived. So the connection was close. I, I, part of the story is actually who the artist is, so I don't want to go into that just yet. But um, I did meet his daughter, who was then already beginning to suffer from dementia. She didn't know it was a book at that point because it was two years after the bushfires. I interviewed her with a tape recorder in 1996 and it was a very fortunate occurrence because five months later she died and would have taken the answers with her. People you mention in the book, are they aware of, of their story being told? Or? They are now. Have they all read the book? My older half-brother read it in its entirety. Um, the younger of the two brothers doesn't have as much English, 
and so he has had parts translated and has wrestled with the other bits. Um, on the whole, I've managed to skate around some touchy bits, and I think we've come out all right. Are there more books coming now? Yes, I'm having a great time at the moment with uh, research about Han van Meijeren, and he um, was the master forger who bamboozled the art critics and forged Vermeers and De Hoog, Peter De Hoog, and Franz Hals, and sold one to Hermann Goering. So some of you might remember his trial in 1947 uh, for collaboration, which was then overturned to be just one of forgery. Aren't there any other books about him already? Or? Many. There are many, and even some films and documentaries. And uh, I thought maybe there's no room for another story. So uh, the best of the books that I've come across is by Jonathan Lopez, who lives in the United States. And I wrote to him and said, look, my story is a very um, loose link with Han van Meijeren. Uh, what do you think? Is the market full? He said, no way. He said, there's always room because it'll be your own take on this story. And um, he's been most helpful. I might have missed it, but what was your motivation for this book, for the coming it's a, book? The, 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 the new book? The new Han um, van We have a book that he wrote and illustrated, and it was published in 1942. He's inscribed the front of it in a very mysterious way. I want to know who that woman is that he's inscribed the book to and I wanted to know more about him because my parents hid the book from me and my parents were quite liberal and open but it was the one thing that they always hid at the back of the wardrobe. So I made it my mission to find this wretched book because it had hid hideous pictures in it, ugly sketches and, and ugly images and it always gave me a strange thrill. So I would bring my friends over and say, let's go looking for the book. When there were two books released about him in 2008 and one, uh, a, a British one in 2004, suddenly he inveigled me. He just reeled me in and I'm, I'm, I'm powerless. He's a little bit charismatic and very mysterious. When's the book likely to come out? Oh my word. <laughs> Quite Next a long week. way down the track yet. Uh, I think we'll. Uh, I can't really put a date on it. I have a long way to go, but I'm 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 doing it slowly. And how do you feel about the current book, The Brush with Molière? This one. Yes. I'm very very grateful, really, that uh, Murdoch has made such a beautiful production of this book. Uh, they spared no expense in putting in coloured pictures and sepia coloured photographs. Um, it's. It's, it's much more than I expected, and I'm pleased to say that it's selling well. Uh, I think they're a bit surprised, and so am I, and delighted. I met up with Yvonne Lewis just when her book was about to be published, and just before I was about to undertake my fifth trip back to the Netherlands. This was clear motivation to look for material for a book of my own. One day it'll happen.